Hi everyone, welcome to the Transitions Collective. I'm your host, Mary Clavier. This week, I'm speaking with Rupali Munga of Entrepreneur Her Academy. Rupali helps business owners with sales and marketing strategies to grow their business in a non-salesy way. She has a specific framework that she teaches, so listen in as she shares some of those details in this interview. I hope you enjoy. Hi, Rupali. Welcome to the show. Hi, Mary. Thank you for inviting me. Great. I'm so excited to have you here today to talk all things sales funnels. Yay! <laughs> so, can we first, um, let's start, can you tell us a little bit about your background? I know it's an open question, but a little bit about yourself and your and your family. Yeah, yeah, sure. Of course, I'd be happy to. So, yeah, so let me tell you a little bit about my, myself professionally, and then mm-hmm. I'll kind of get into more of the personal side. So, yeah. from on a professional level... Over the last three years, I have helped a Fortune 10 company uh, build and grow a multi-million dollar wireless business uh, portfolio by $1.5 million, and I've also built my own six-figure business in the high-ticket digital educational space, and one of the things that contributed to my success was building profitable sales funnel. That's why I love talking about it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And now, I help entrepreneurs do the same. So you know, specifically what I help entrepreneurs with is like getting more leads and clients or customers in a, in a more non-salesy way because who likes selling, um, and without burning yourself out. Right. So that's kind of the approach that I take when it comes to sales and funnels and marketing and stuff. Um, and more specifically, I absolutely love working with women. Um, it is a personal passion of mine to be more women leaders, be successful in business, and, you know, continue stepping into their own power because I think women are already powerful. Um, so <laughs> everything I do ties back to this mission. That's also the reason why my company name is Entrepreneur Her Academy. Yeah. Um, so it's a very specific focus on that. So that's a little bit about me from a professional standpoint, um, personal standpoint. So I'm a new mom. I actually, um, my baby is eight months old. So he's still, still a baby. Yeah. Um, and I live in New Jersey with my husband, with my baby boy and my manager of lives. Well, so. um, and then originally I'm from New York, born in Brooklyn, raised in Queens. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just been a very interesting ride, quite honestly, building a business, a baby at the same time. Um, and one thing I've learned is with commitment and proper time management, anything is possible. So (laughs) there you go. Yes. I just did, um, a productivity series and I always, well, I learn new things talking to everybody, but it's really a different perspective talking to people that are really productivity specialists in the space of entrepreneurs, because, um, yeah, especially the time for moms is, it's. Yeah, so, so limited and yes. uh, you have to do everything in our power to be strategic about it. So. Yes, and like super laser focused, yes. Yeah. And eight so. months, like before you know it, like my daughter's having her fifth birthday now. So, and I'm like, oh my God, how is this possible? So Yeah, and that's another thing. Like, I don't want to miss out on, right. you know, so that's why it's like right. I have dedicated hours specifically for work and then dedicated hours for him. And when I'm with him, I'm like, shut everything else off. You have so to. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to jump right in. So I'd like to start with, and I know I've, I've explained a little bit about my audience. You're familiar with the Transitions Collective already. Mm-hmm. It's for women that are transitioning from corporate to their own businesses and also then building their businesses. Right. So some may be familiar with with sales funnels, click funnels. Um, Some may not know anything. So let's level set everybody just in case. And can you tell my audience what sales funnels are? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the most simplest way to explain sales funnels is really that it's a systemized process through which you attract, nurture, and then convert your interested prospects into Mm -hmm. clients or customers, okay? So think about it this way. I like to always give like a real life scenario um, versus thinking about it in like digital terms. So so for example, like when you walk into like a CVS or Walgreens or any of those pharmacy pharmacy shops, right? Mm -hmm. Do you ever, like, did you ever think about why the pharmacy is always at the opposite end of the entrance and it's it's positioned there for a very strategic reason and that's because they want you the owners of cvs walgreens etc want you to walk through 
all of their aisles before you ever even reach the pharmacy. Yep. Yep. Hoping that you might remember something you need or something that you like and pick that up on the way, right? So what they're yeah. doing in that process is that they're maximizing their revenue from you and every other person that walks through their door, right? Yes. So they got you in because you needed to buy medicine, but then you picked up some deodorant, some nail polish, you right. know, maybe some right. diapers if you're a mom. They get me every time. <laughs> right. And bam, you didn't even go in for that and you walk out <laughs> spending like $50 plus whatever your right. medicine. Us, right. 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 So this is like part of a real life sales funnel in action, right? Like just really thinking about it from day to day life. Um, analogy. Yeah. Yeah. And all successful stores, like, you know, if you ever think about it in this way, like next time you go into a store, like think about like the yeah. bread and eggs. They're always well, yeah, back. the milk. Yeah. The milk in the supermarkets always in the back corner. It's like, yeah. Yeah. So this is making sense so far. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. So, so I guess the next question that I usually get asked is like, so how do you translate this like a sales funnel into right. an online space? Right. Yeah. So let's look at that. Really. There's four pillars to building a profitable, profitable sales funnel. Right. Um, and I like to say profitable because it's very easy to get lost in, you know, making money, but then losing money on the back end if we don't have the funnel set up properly. Right. right? So, so there's four steps, right? And the first step of a funnel, any funnel for that matter, is attracting people to your business. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at another real life example, okay? Like yep. a local gym, right? Planet mm -hmm. Fitness. I'm just going to mm -hmm. put that one out yep. there because I guess a lot of us or some of us like exercising, but yep. Um, yep. so, and I still remember when they first started several years ago, right? What they did was they sent direct mailers and delivered that to people's homes. They partnered with local health shops, at least in my area, mm -hmm. and had like complimentary gym passes available for people at their shops, right? That was like mm -hmm. some of their strategies to attract mm -hmm. people to mm -hmm. their gym, right? Mm -hmm. So online, it's the same thing, but it's much more efficient and gets you in front of people way faster through social, right? I mean, we all know right. social is like right. king nowadays or queen. Um, right. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, and so forth. So what you're doing in this first step of, of your funnel is really attracting people to your business using mm -hmm. smart content strategies on social. Okay, does that make sense so far? Yes, I, th I think from my perspective, something that gets tricky is like, there's so much noise out there, right? In so many cases. So, and maybe this will come up later in some of your later steps, but um what if someone's thinking there's too much competition for them? How would you say that they're, are they looking at the, their business the right way or not? Yeah, that's a really good question. And actually something that I was definitely going to touch on, but I can, you know, kind we of. We can uh, come back. We can come okay. back if it makes more sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, we can address that question, but it all comes down to the way you're positioning your brand um, in okay. the market. And one thing I like to always mention is that competition actually is really great because yeah. it's showing you that there's real demand for your service or your product right and if there wasn't competition quite honestly it would make mine and your job way harder because then we would need to prove out and test our own concept right but if there's other people doing it that means there's demand right and it all comes down to how you, we're positioning our brand versus our competitors mm -hmm. so we can like talk that. about that a little bit yes more. that's a great perspective i like that okay, okay. awesome Okay. So okay, that's so the attracting first clients. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the attraction piece, right? Mm -hmm. It's like getting people to your business like Planet Fitness does, right? Mm -hmm. So again, applying that in the online work through social. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about how to like reduce that overwhelm because like you said, it could get very, it could get overwhelming online, yeah. right? So yeah. we'll talk about how to like stay focused. Mm -hmm. um, so the second part of a profitable funnel or the second pillar I like to say is like capturing leads. So what that means is for everyone that sees your content, right? Your number one go goal should be to create goodwill and give them, some, give them something so valuable that they want to learn or get more from you based on whatever your business model is, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, that's when, when you give them, when they give you their email address, now you have them in your community and you can, you know, continue giving them information or selling your program services and so let's look about look at that real life example i was talking about which is planet mm -hmm. fitness right mm -hmm. planet fitness does this too like you know I, I don't know if anyone um that's listening have you ever signed up for like a gym fitness membership program like i've signed up for la fitness planet mm -hmm. fitness right and they do their best to get their email address from you too and what they'll continue yeah. doing is sending you offers and around new year's 
Oh, they'll yes. ramp up. They'll yes. ramp up those emails, right? Oh, buy yes. one, you know, free classes for a week, whatever. And then as soon as New Year's comes around, the company that was sending the emails and keeping them themselves in the forefront, mm -hmm. you'll end up going with that gym and mm -hmm. sign up for membership. You right. see how powerful that is, right? Yeah. Like really yeah. building that relationship and staying forefront. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the second part of your of of a profitable funnel, right? Mm -hmm. And now the third part is nurturing so this this piece is like directly tied to the last point that i just mentioned yep. so if planet fitness got your email and never sent you emails they'd be out of sight out of mind right you'll join some right. other gym that's on the forefront of your mind right. or if you have a buddy or husband wife uh, husband partner whatever going to one you'll go with them of course but the right. whole point here is nurturing you know the whole point is to get that email address to then nurture them so you can continue giving value building your relationship and then when they're ready when your prospect is ready you know to to take action on that product or service that they're right. selling you're going to be forefront right you know because you've been giving and you've been so consistent right does that make sense it's that consistency that's super important and it's something I struggle with personally sometime. And I think other people listening, you know, depending where their zone of genius is or their expertise or what they like to do, um, they may struggle with this too. You know, the consistency piece of finding what you are able to stay consistent with and really just executing against it each time instead of being all the places and doing all the things and all that. Exactly. It's all about, you know, I, I like to call it the power of one. And we'll talk about this in, um, in one of, you know, yeah. later on, but um, I'm all about like staying focused, staying very simple and using the power of one, right? Yeah. Which is really identifying like, what is ultimately, what are the one, what one thing that's going to get me the biggest bang for my buck in my business? Yeah. Right? One activity or whatever right. that is. Right. Um, and email is definitely, definitely on top. Now with that said though, right? Because um, nowadays in today's environment, email alone isn't enough right alone yeah so yeah. what what that means is that you need to be active on social however especially if you're in the b2c space like business to consumer yeah um so what, what you, so when you're nurturing leads you can you know integrate your email strategy with your social but just choose one right it's about so it's about doing it very strategically in a way that your whenever your email so you can schedule your emails like maybe mm -hmm. once a week or twice a week and those same days you post on social and you know what there's actually really cool tools which i'll talk about later that yeah. helps you automate all of this so yes. you don't have to i'm not the type of person that can think of content on the go i need yeah. to like just plan it and get plan it and get it out yes, yes. you know and that re removes the overwhelm on so many levels yep <laughs> no that's true um, yeah that's true yeah so, so does that make sense? Yes. The, the third piece? Okay, great. Yes. So nurture. Yes. Excellent. Nurture. Love that. So fourth is the holy grail, right? Which is converting your leads that we talked about through your nurturing process into customers or clients, mm -hmm. right? And like, like I said, I mean, like this is the most important part of your funnel and bottom line. So again, with Planet Fitness, going back to that as an example mm -hmm. for consistency purposes, they're sending you all those emails and promotions because bottom line, they want you to become a customer, right? They're doing it yeah. in a very giving way. They're staying top of right. mind, but let's be real. Right. They want you to become a customer, right. right? Right. So through this nurturing, you know, giving you discounts and promos and gifts, they convert you into a gym membership. Mm -hmm. Same concept applies to your business, right? And this, you know, in this funnel process that I'm talking about, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. You could be mm -hmm. in services, you could be in e-commerce, mm -hmm. um, it could be really any industry. It could be to be, B to C, right? It applies yeah. to all industries. The way you attract people in your business obviously shifts a little, mm -hmm. depending on whether you're in B to C or B to B. But the con the the system of a funnel is essentially the same for any business. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's important to note too. And then people can just look at it a little differently in terms of what they might offer, right? right. Depending what type of business they have. Right. But yeah. Right. right. It's just a matter of it's really uh and I, I like to think about things in, in a more systemized way. I guess that's mm -hmm. just how my brain operates. Yeah. Um and you know, it's like once you have this process established in your business you know, any offer you create or any product you sell, you can literally duplicate it, 
right? It's about mm -hmm. the first time getting it right and start generating those profits. It's a very duplicatable process. Mm -hmm. Oh, you I know? love that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a quick pro, pro tip here is mm -hmm. that, so if, if you're just starting out, right, you're just brand new to business. Um, and, you know, there's obviously as, as, as a new entrepreneur, there's, there's overwhelm, right? And so to yeah. re remove that overwhelm, what I recommend is like starting out and focusing on selling one product or program or service, you know, whatever your mm -hmm. area of specialty is. And then once you have that going and generating profits through your funnel, right? Just focus on that one product. Mm -hmm. The real power, okay, comes when you're able to increase your profits by retaining those customers and selling them more products and services that you know will help them solve their problems at a higher level. And now in marketing lingo, we call it increasing the lifetime value of a customer. So mm -hmm. you help them more and then you make yep. more money. So this is a win-win. Yeah. Now, this is a little bit more advanced. That's why I said for someone that's just starting out, you wouldn't even think about this, right? Right, now. right. But for, for anyone that's listening or watching that is already in business and already is selling a product or service and you're kind of like, you want to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest ways to do that is to offer your existing customers more products and services because it increases your ROI, increases yeah. your return on investment and the lifetime value of that customer. It's always more cost effective for you to make more money from existing customers than get new ones. Than to chase right. new ones. Right. Right. Because exactly. then you're, then you're not going out and say, looking for another avatar or trying right. to talk to someone else, another customer and trying to say, Hey, you should also come because this is what I offer. Then you're, and you're improving. What you're saying is you're improving what you do and how far you extend with the people that you already have. Right. And these people already yeah. know you, like right. you, trust you. You know, if you've done a good job by providing your services or selling your products, they right. most and more than likely, they're going to love what you have to offer you as a personal brand. And right. they're going to be more likely to buy your service, continue buying your services than someone they don't know. Right. right. This is where real, like where real optimization of your business comes mm -hmm. in. Right? But again, this is more of an advanced strategy for someone who's already been in business. Yeah. No, I love that though. It's stay focused so that then you can grow and like use what you've made to do more right. after. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about creating assets. So yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Okay, great. So that was a great, that was a great walkthrough. Thank you for that. So let's just recap on the four. It was attract. I didn't catch what you called the second one, but the first one is attract clients. Second is capturing leads. Oh yeah. Capturing leads. Mm -hmm. Then the, um, Nurturing. Nurturing is third. And then converting. And then converting. Yes. Okay. Awesome. That's fantastic. Okay. So along with that, you mentioned some tools. So can we dig into that a little bit? Some of the tools that you find helpful to be able to do this and to automate your systems? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So the first tool that I absolutely love that actually allows you to create a funnel, like the one that I just mentioned, it's called mm -hmm. ClickFunnels. Okay. Um, and, and I'll tell you the reason why I love it. It's because personally, I'm not a techie. I don't have mm -hmm. a tech background. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I don't even, I'm not even a graphic designer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've never coded, yeah. I've never done anything in tech yeah. or systems yeah. from a technical perspective. And and I, like for me, it's been so easy to use because mm -hmm. the way this software is built out, it's actually built for people that don't have a tech background, right? Oh, awesome. yeah. Everything is already coded. It's literally plug and play and click, right? Like mm -hmm. once you understand the software. Okay. So ClickFunnels is a great tool for you to be able to actually like create a funnel, right? Mm -hmm. Very different than a normal website, right? Like right. WordPress or something. That's very different. Like that, that's, right. that's that's just like a completely different ball game. Right. Like funnels is one. Second is, so, you know, the nurturing piece that we were talking about as part of your funnel, you have to be able to continue building that relationship through email. So an email software that I absolutely love is it's called active campaign. Mm -hmm. And now there's so many email softwares out there and I've used mm -hmm. a bunch of them too, but I'll tell you why I like active campaign the best. It's because, um, you know, in your business, it's very important for us when we're communicating to our prospects, right, through our emails, right. that we're speaking to them um, in a personalized way, right, in a way where we know where they are as part of their journey. So, for example, okay. if someone has already bought my service versus someone who's brand new to me, I need right. to be having different conversations. Yep. Right? Yep. And so, with Active Campaign, you can create. And this is, I love this, right? You can create, they literally call it automations. And so what that means is that you can trigger, 
right, a separate set of emails to your li email list based mm -hmm. on wherever that person is in the journey of with mm -hmm. you, right? And this is yeah. all in a very automated fashion. Yes. So yeah. you would, you know, set up those emails in advance and those emails will go out, you know, whenever you have it scheduled um, based on where that person is in your customer journey. Yeah, very robust. Yeah very robust right yeah. it's very very robust and it's easy to use to be quite honest yeah uh, and and you can integrate it with other like you can integrate it with click funnels right mm -hmm. you can integrate right. it if you're running uh, ads on facebook or if you're doing any sort of facebook marketing you can do integrate it into like really cool tools so the whole point is that it's all seamless mm -hmm. and it's like one process versus mm -hmm. like you try yes. so how do i get a payment and right you know, right yes Yes. So that's the second one. And a third one, actually, uh, it's called meetedgar.com. Oh, yeah. I've heard a lot about this one recently. I haven't actually tried it. but It's, it's amazing. It amazing. Yeah. And I'll okay. tell you why. Yeah. There's a lot of um, content planning and scheduling tools. Mm -hmm. out there. Right. The reason why I actually really like Meet Edgar is because who has time to continue creating content all the time? Right. I mean, yes. we're all very, very busy. We're yeah. moms. We have, you know, some of us have full time jobs. Everyone yeah. has a, a bazillion things going on in their life. Yeah. Right. So what what Meet Edgar will do for you is, yes, it will schedule your content, but it also recycles your content for you. So, for example, let's say you've created a month or two months worth of content. Right. Mm -hmm a month, let's just say a month worth of content, mm -hmm. and you put it into Meet Edgar, you've scheduled everything. You can actually tell Meet Edgar, I want you to now recycle my content, like figure out, they have like al algorithms where they'll figure out how to take your content and like restructure it and then repost it on your platform so it doesn't look like you're posting the same thing over and over. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. That's yeah, that's amazing. That. And they do it across different platforms, right? So yeah, and literally I think, three days ago, they rolled it out for Instagram. But up oh, until did? then, yes. So now they do Instagram, oh, wow. Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Game, really on. <laughs> Game on. Game <laughs> on. Really. So I would say those are the so three cool. main tools that you need to get this funnel up and running. Okay. Really, really, it's the funnel, click funnels and email. But if you want to be super efficient, right. definitely add and meet Edgar. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, thank you for those. So I want to I wanna dig more into the part about sales, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, sales funnels, I, I'd say a lot of people are probably uncomfortable in the space of sales. And I know you have a framework about how to not be salesy while you're doing your sales, right? To be more um, authentic when you do it. So can you speak a little bit about that? You have some tips. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So what I, you know, what I like to teach and the way I actually operate in my own business too is, you know, really sales, I think is like a mindset, right? So yeah. having the mindset that as, as a business owner and every business owner technically is a salesperson, right? I mean, yeah. that's how our yeah, business you have, survives. It's a, right? it's a business, not a hobby, right? Yeah. But the way I like to look at sales is, as more of an invitation, right? So I'm in the business of helping people mm -hmm. solve their problems, right? And every mm -hmm. business owner, no matter what industry you're in, you're solving someone's problem in one mm -hmm. way or another, right? So mm -hmm. I like to look at as I'm inviting you to help, to allow me to help you solve your problem. And the way I do this specifically, um, and in a funnel, the reason why I love funnels is because in your funnel, you can create, so like, for example, one, one, you know, very um, tangible tip that I can give you, right, to put this, to visualize this, is that in your funnel, right, when you invite someone, right, that attraction mm -hmm. piece to your funnel, mm -hmm. what you're doing, the way you're attracting them, they're not going to just give you their email address for no reason, right? They're going to give you their email address because you offered something of value to them, right? right. Let's say you're in the fitness space, you're a new mom and you want to lose weight or something. You're offering like, a, a checklist or a cheat sheet that helps a new mom lose weight, you know, in X amount of days or whatever your whatever it is that you help people do, right? right. right. You're giving that mom something of value. You're not saying, hey, come buy my product or right. buy my program. No, hey, mom, hey, new mom, you know, I have this awesome resource that you can implement in your business. And here's the thing that I think a lot of people get wrong with, with this process is 
they don't think about like you're not just giving something of value to then only think about inviting them to so solve, uh, you know, inviting them into your into your program services. You're genuinely in that one content piece, giving them something like one, just one big tip that they can implement in their in their business or life or whatever it is right away, even if they don't need you, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens right. in this, you're creating goodwill. You're mm -hmm. creating a lot of goodwill, right? Because that new mom will be like, oh my God, you know, like, yeah, I detoxed, detoxed for five days and I lost whatever, two, three pounds. But you know what? This is not enough. I go back to Mary and I'm going to see how, how, how else she can help me. Do you see how that creates yep. good will? And then it puts you in a position of as an expert and she mm -hmm. comes back to you now because five days is right. not her, right? Let's be right. real. She's going right. to continue needing your help. Right. Right. So you did it in a very genuine way where you gave her value and, but, she, but that's not solving her entire problem. You can't give away too much. Just right. give away enough that one big thing that she can implement right away, and then right. take more. Right. So, so I look at it more from a giving and mm -hmm. inviting mindset. Mm -hmm. And then you know, as as part of the next step of the funnel, again, you know, once she has gotten that, let's say, um, free content piece that you've offered, we call it lead magnet in the marketing mm -hmm. world. You know, then on the next step, you can offer, you can do like a like a brief video. You know, hey. Yeah. Thank you so much for you know downloading xyz if you want x you know if you want more help in solving xyz problem i invite you to schedule a consult call or check out this product or service right so mm -hmm. it's about the language that you use that makes all the difference in the world yeah and then you're not feeling pushy and they're not feeling like you're being pushy and it's much more of an exchange instead of a just here i am like Exactly. It's about the, the, the invitation and the language that you're using, not like, hey, buy my product, the product and service. No. Right. Right. That. Right. I love that. Yeah. That's very good. Okay. All right. So you have a couple of things um, and I want to make sure we get a chance to mention them. So you have a, a Facebook group that you run that's all around this subject and also um, some more tips for profitable sales funnels. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I have a free private Facebook group um, and it's called Profitable Entrepreneur Her. And like you were just saying, it's all about helping entrepreneurs creating and then scaling profitable sales funnels so that you can get more leads, get more clients or customers in a streamlined and non-salesy way and without burning what I do in there is I do weekly live trainings, right, um, on various different topics when it comes to marketing, when it comes to sales, business building, um, mm -hmm. a little bit of mindset, because let's be real, mindset goes a long way. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. In business, like right? Talk about it for years and like... Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, this group is all about, you know, women that are really taking action, big or small, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. But it's about taking action and being super committed to like actually getting your business up and running and then growing, right? right. So that you can like fulfill those personal goals as well as business goals that you have. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's a free private Facebook group. And, um, I, if you want, I could share it with the link with you and yeah, I'll put um, it in the show notes for sure. Okay. I want people okay. to be able to access it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's my private Facebook group. And, um, also I actually have for anyone that's interested, you can get a free copy of, uh, the profitable sales funnel roadmap. Mm -hmm. And this is where I actually outline my process, very simple seven step process just mm -hmm. so that you can start creating a profitable sales funnel on your own, right? Yeah. Ultimately, to help you increase your cash flow or get it started, right? If you're yeah. just getting it started, yeah. make the impact you really want. Um, and then without being salesy or burning yourself out. So really, yeah. that's my whole goal with the, this roadmap that I've created. So um, I can share a link with you. So, you know, anyone that's interested in yeah. that one, free copy, they can. Yeah, that would be great. And, you know, Rupali, I to go back for one second for, for one more question around all of this, Sure. I didn't really specify in the beginning, but no matter where you are in your journey, this is an important thing to do, right? So even when you're first starting your business, you need to be collecting the emails, engaging with an audience, right? Like, and, and all of that. We didn't really mention that part specifically, yes. but I had kind of assumed it. So I, but I wanted to backtrack and say that because I'm assuming it's, 
it's the same for you, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because this is no matter where you could just be starting. So, for, so this is what I say. I usually say, you know, not everyone is right for sales funnels, but I'll tell you who is. Number one, for people that actually are, you know, if you have, an, even if you have an idea um, and you have, you know, you, you know what you want to sell, right? You have a product, yeah. program, service, and you know you want to sell it. You right. got to think about it this way. How are you going to sell that thing? Right? right. And the way you're going to sell that is through a sales funnel that's non salesy right? Which is right. what we're talking about right. here. So you could right. be in the, in the beginning part of, you know, you could just be getting started or you could be, you know, obviously in business for a long time. Right. Um, it doesn't matter. Every single business owner really needs this if they're looking to, you know, get more clients or customers in this way in a very systemized and efficient manner, honestly. Yeah. Right. That like yeah, reduces exactly. the overwhelm and it allows you to make that impact. Right. Right. That you really want to make and make the money you really want to make. It. Right. So, right. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Thanks. I realized that. And I was like, oh, I want to get that in there too. Okay. So, um, can you, I, so I have two last questions. Sure. Um, one, if you can tell everyone where they can find you. Yeah. So, uh, you can, so personally you can find me, well, the entrepreneur Academy brand, you can find us on Instagram. So mm -hmm. it's just Instagram.com forward slash entrepreneur her yep. Academy. Same thing on Facebook. Um, I, we have a business fan page there, so you could find us there. Um, if you want to connect with me personally, mm -hmm. I'm on LinkedIn. So it's just LinkedIn okay. under my name. So we're mm -hmm. Monga, right? Mm -hmm. So happy to connect with everyone on anyone that's listening that's interested mm -hmm. on LinkedIn personally. Uh, but if you want to follow the Entrepreneur Academy brand, we're on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. So Excellent. Okay. And a final question I ask everybody, um, what skill from corporate has helped you the most as an entrepreneur? So let's see the top, like number one skill, because there's a few. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. I would say I would say, honestly, it comes down to owning your personal brand, because I think mm -hmm. even when I was in corporate, I always felt that in order for me to continue moving up the top, I had to, quote unquote, sell myself, which is put my brand out there in a way that gets me seen in front of my, you know, bosses, yeah. you know, et cetera. And, and that's all about like selling your own personal brand right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. that's the only way you get to move up top. If you, if no one knows about you, right? And you're not putting yourself out there as, as a corporate professional, you're not right. going to get that promotion. No matter right. how hard you work, you're just not going to get that promotion, right? right. Um, right. And that, I think that comes down to personal branding. And now that skill is very powerful in the business space because again, in the business space, no right. one is going to buy your products or services if you don't know how to you know, actually put your brand out there. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's a very transferable, a transferable skill. And for, for women that are coming from corporate, um, you know, it's like you have a leg up because you've yeah. been doing that in your corporate life. That's true. That's a, I, I like that one. Yeah. That's a cool yeah. one. It's a good one. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to yeah. have to like, that's a good thing to like, remember daily. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you know, for like putting yourself out there and everything. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. It's, I felt like when, even when I was at corporate, it's like, I constantly felt like I had to sell myself in, obviously it's a different type of sale, right? Cause you're yeah. selling your own brand, right. but it really right. did come down to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's a good one. It's one of my favorite questions to ask. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great question. So yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for Polly. This was great. This was so great. Tons of great information and helpful, useful things for everyone. So I'm excited to put this out into the world. So thank You're you for coming today. You're so welcome. And I'm so happy I was able to share, um, share all this information. And I look forward to connecting with anyone that's you know, interested and just reach out to me on LinkedIn. In, yeah. In the chat. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Talk you, Mary. Bye. 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 Hi. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Rapali. I thought she had some great tips and takeaways for the framework and how to be able to use it in your business. So to recap, it's attract, capture leads, nurture, and convert. So I'd like to challenge you to try to think of a way that you can implement this in your business. What's a step that you could take today, an action that you can take to get you one step closer? So think about that. And if you'd like to hear more from Rupali, you can visit her at Entrepreneur Academy 
I'll have links in the show notes. As always, if you'd like to reach out to me, I'm at mary at thetransitionscollective.com. And if you'd like to hear more about our membership community that's launching in March 2019, please visit thetransitionscollective.com forward slash community. You'll find out more information about what we're planning to do with bringing you experts and resources to help move your business forward. So I hope to talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.